I guess this is the Jupiter cargo barge by Lord Kelder. Oh, that actually looks very interesting. I, I, we're gonna check it out together. All right, let's do the quick flight around here. I guess seeing this, all these interesting looking features. All right, that's the whole fly run. Let's check the PC now. I think it's about fifteen thousand. So the ship costs fifteen thousand five hundred and six PC, which means that you can, you know, build this on official multiplayer vanilla survival. In terms of weapons, the ship has these two Gatling turrets up here, some more down here, and there's nothing at the bottom. I'm guessing those are purely for self-defense, so it's actually acceptable because it's not like a warship that's meant to attack other ships, so it would be nice to, you know, see an artillery turret too, at least. We have a lesser antenna up here, and oh, I thought this was gonna be a thruster with the housing and stuff but this is actually a jump drive I mean aesthetically speaking this is very cool but you know ideally you don't want any bullet to be able to go through your armor straight to your jump drive oh there's more here what the hell oh there's three jump drives I guess that makes sense because this is like a cargo ship to the right here we have more of these aesthetic touches to the back here hmm it's kind of empty back here. I feel like they're missing an opportunity of making this like an actual landing pad. But of course you can just, you know, just land something over there if you want to. Alright, to the back here. Hmm. I obviously disagree with this kind of design in terms of practicality and armor. But this certainly looks very nice. It just matches the, you know, the whole aesthetic of the ship. And down here. We have more Gatling turret for self-defense, more aesthetic touches. These are very cool though. And uh, these fake arms, you know, like holding arms thingy. Because obviously they don't really help with anything. But they certainly look very cool. Um, I guess you can actually use this as landing gears on planets. Yeah, this will be a good landing gear on planets. It won't stick to the ground because there's no magnetic plate or landing gear down here, but you know. This can work. Oh, I do like this. Do you guys see this? This is walkable. You guys know how I like ships to be walkable. <laughs> Where does this lead? Oh, there, there we go. Here's the entrance. We're gonna check this later. Here's one of the cargo containers. A little bit exposed, but I guess, you know, if this is meant to be like a lightweight cargo hauler that is not too weight down by armor, this can make sense. And it certainly looks very cool. Do you guys see this? It looks nice. With how they integrate a uh, beam block as well to complement the design feature of the large industrial cargo container here. Really nice work. We have the warfare iron thrusters here to the side. Hmm. Is this not gonna hit the jetting turret? I guess it won't. I do wonder what's inside this bulge though. I guess we can take a look inside. Alright. Uh oh. These are wait what? Oh never mind. These are the large industrial hydrogen tanks. I thought they weren't connected to anything, but because you know I saw this and what the hell? But no, they they're connected through the middle here. Oh, very interesting internal structure. We're certainly gonna check that out later. Is there anything up here? I guess not. There's a window here. There's a window here. Do you guys see this? There's like there's like multi levels of floors or decks on this thing i mean in this thing I, I really cannot wait to get inside there's more windows back there we're gonna check it out oh by the way the nacelle housing it looks really nice as well very cool all right let's check to the front here to the front we have the bridge here very open but it's it's very stylized you don't see this a lot on space engineers Usually when you see this kind of open bridge design to the front, it's not stylized or barely stylized. But this crater managed to pull off this stylized look while having an open bridge. And it looks really nice as well. That's really cool. I like it. There's the ore detector here. I guess it makes sense to put it there. There's the antenna and they integrated the thrusters with the front design of the ship as well. With the texturing and coloring, oh wow, hold on. This is a really cool cargo ship. 
Alright, and to the top here, we have this fake antenna dome thingy. Which, you know, I guess it's a, it's a nice aesthetic touch that barely costs anything. Alright, I guess that's the whole exterior. Let's get into the ship now. Hmm, do we want to get in from here? Or from in there? Oh, there's also that entrance way. There's so many entrances. Uh, I guess we can get in from the belly so that we can, you know, check it out from the bottom to the top. Alright, let's go up here. Jump down here. Hmm. There's a door. Oh, an arrow with an armory kind of thing here. And more leather. This is the internal compartment that we saw earlier. I'm guessing over there is the bridge. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, we're gonna check the back of the ship first. Look at this whole place. Do you guys see the aesthetic here? This looks really nice. Oh, there's a, an air fan. I guess this is the old air fan. Yeah. Hmm. More fuel tanks. Huh. I'm guessing this leads to another one down there. So we're not gonna check that out. Hmm. To the back here. Is this some kind of airlock? We have H2 generators integrated into the design. I like this. Reinforced conveyor tubes. Alright, let's just go up here. What the hell? This feels like a maze. I like it though. This is a really cool design trick here. So do you guys see this passages that lead to nowhere? Well, if you guys look over here, you can repair these thrusters from inside this passage. I mean, these thrusters from inside these passages. That's a really nice design touch. Design touch. I like it when things are repairable from inside the ship. I'm guessing this is some kind of a crew quarter. I cannot open this door. Hmm. Hold on. There's more up here. We're gonna. <laughs> Why is there so many floors? Right. I'm guessing to open that door over there. We need to use this button here. No. This for H2 generators. How do I open this door? I guess we can just, you know, open all the door from the control panel. Open everything. Alright. Wait. Is it, it's closed again. Uh, hold on, I'm, I'm gonna close everything now. Just to make sure things are airtight. I guess we can just teleport inside. There we go. Oh, this is some kind of an... Whoa. I like this tunnel. I, I like tunnels on in my ships. You guys know, if you guys been watching my build progress videos, which are very, very slow, you guys know that my ships have these internal tunnels for repairs. This ship has that as well. This is very cool. I mean, have those as well. Here's another locked door. We're just gonna check what's outside. I guess this is like an exit. Oh, and this is not an exit. What the? There's more room back here. And there's the medical room there. Where? What? <laughs> Wait. How? How am I supposed to review this ship? There's so many rooms. Hold on. Uh, uh, uh. Let me check down here first, right? Let's hope this doesn't branch off to multiple rooms. Alright. This is a dead end. I'm guessing this is to. What is this for? I'm not sure, but I guess you can look down there. What's down there though? So I saw this and uh, oh, this is what uh, the room that we saw earlier. That's where I am right now. This crazy. Um, I, will I be able to check all the rooms? All right, we, we, we'll try to check all the rooms, guys. I don't want to use spectator mode to check all the rooms because that kind of feels like cheating, you know? Oh, these locked doors though. Alright, let's teleport inside again now. So this is some kind of a uh, medical room, right? That we saw earlier. This is some kind of a lounge. And there's nothing here other than an, an armory. There's an air fan there. Uh, what? Engineering observation room, cargo container access, 
warfare battery, sci-fi interior wall for aesthetic with lights with round armor slope for extra aesthetic touches, sliding hatch door. What? Wait. What's this door for? It's probably for another room. I feel like this is the most intricate interior that I have ever seen in a ship on Space Engineers. At least, uh, you know, the reasonably sized ones. Up here, we have some kind of a storage area. Airlock. Crew quarters. Uh, guys, I'm gonna be honest. I think I'm gonna be missing some rooms in this review because I don't think I'll be able to, but we'll see. We'll try. So this is some kind of a uh, crew lounge or crew quarters with all the Oh, bedroom. Bedroom is always better than toilet because it has more privacy. Alright, nice aesthetic touch here with the planters. Oh wow, this is crazy considering this ship only costs 15,000 PC. Look, I mean, look at this. See what you guys can get if you're like conservative with your PC. You can spend the rest of your PC on this kind of things. Alright, this is, you know, where the crew- Oh my- Oh no, that's very nice. Oh. So, in one of my videos, I showed how you can have a fake sky on your ships. I mean, in the bedroom, to emulate like a planet sky. And this person used the same or similar trick to have this fake scenery. That's amazing. Wow. Alright guys, um, I'm kind of losing my voice here. I, I, I'm having a congestion as well. So I'm gonna get some food and eat for a bit and then I'm gonna continue the review after I'm finished eat eating and stuff. Alright, BRB. I got buttermilk chicken rice. Very nice. Alright, I've done feasting and I've returned to the land of the engineers. Let's continue the tour of this mess now. There's a sci-fi control panel there. Uh, where were we again? Uh, hold on. Oh, there's more of this repair. What the hell? Repair passage here, but there's something else up here. What the... Uh, I guess we were up there before. So we're gonna check what's here. This is some kind of a passage. I mean some kind of like, you know, an in-between room. Some kind of a storage room here with a view to some conveyors. Uh, more storage room. What is this place? Oh, this is the cry chamber room. Look at that view though. This amazing. All right. Uh, oh, let me let me fix my microphone. Actually, something's wrong. All right, I guess this sounds better. I guess this sounds better now. All right. Hmm. <coughs> Cargo access. Another bedroom. Programmable block. The, the, oh wait, this is an, this is an airlock, whoops. Uh, some kind of an in-between room. I guess this is the bridge? No, hold on, what is this? This is to turn the assembler on and off. I, I mean, that's not really necessary, but you know. Nice touch there. More armory. Hmm. Another... Uh, later chef down there. Is this the... I think this like the room that we were in before. The one with the hydrogen tanks in there. Mm. Oh, no. It's actually another room. Oh, there's like nothing in... Wait a second. Whoa. Uh, I'm guessing this ends in... What the hell? Uh... Is this where we're at right now? I think this is where we're at right now, right? Down here. <laughs> Alright, so that leads to some kind of an access to this floor area here. That's crazy. And as we saw as we were flying around there, uh, finally, in here is the bridge of the ship. Before we check the bridge though, I'm gonna quickly run back to the, to the back of the ship because I thought I saw some rooms back there. Alright, never mind. I think we fi we have explored most of the interior. I'm pretty sure I missed some rooms, but you know, it's a really big ship. I mean, it's not really that big actually, but 
it's very intricate. All right, let's check the internals now. The ship has six large industrial hydrogen tanks, and the ship weights uh, 620 tons only. That's crazy. That, that, that should be more than enough for a decent amount of fuel time. Oh, only two H2 generators though. That's gonna take a while to refuel, though you can easily add, you know, more H2 generators. There's more than enough room and PCU space on the ship for you to be able to do that. <clears throat> Quite a lot of oxygen tanks. I don't think the ship needs that many oxygen tanks. So there's some kind of an imbalance there. Wait, what? <laughs> no refinery? Really? <laughs> I think a ship like this should... I mean, I know this is a cargo ship, right? But you can easily add like a basic refinery in here and the ship will be a lot more useful. Even as a cargo ship, it's nice to be able to, you know, produce stuff without relying on other ships. It does have assemblers though. I guess the reasoning is like, you'll be carrying materials and you can use those materials to assemble stuff without you needing to actually refining ores. But still, I prefer to see actual refineries on this kind of ship. That's a lot of batteries, so that's nice. Is there a solar panel? No solar panel. Hydrogen engine, no hydrogen engine. Reactor, it has a single large warfare reactor that we saw back there. And gyroscopes, oh, there's a conserva conservative amount of gyroscopes, so that's nice. Beacon, antenna, that's how many cargo containers the ship has, by the way. That's a lot of cargo containers. Kind of an overkill with uh, the number of air vents. Which kind of makes sense because the ship do have the ship does have a lot of doors, but you can see how if the ship were wasn't using that many doors, they could have saved some PCU on less air vents and doors. That's the gravity generator. The ship has one uh, respawn point. Is there a survival kit? No survival kit. And that's all the jump drives that we saw earlier. So in terms of the internals in its role as a cargo ship this is decent i think you have more than enough cargo capacity here for most survival purpose but some things are clearly unbalanced like the number of h2 generators and how the ship doesn't have any refinery not even basic refinery so you know those should be easily fixable though so all right let's try to fly the ship now mm, forward acceleration is i mean it's not good at all. Just for a combat, uh, for normal day-to-day -day operations, this is you know this is more than enough because you don't, you're not gonna be using your thrusters too much anyway. As a cargo ship, you'll most likely just be jumping around and then slowly tugging to the port or the ship or mothership or whatever or a base where you're supposed to go. Upward acceleration is a, uh, basically the acceleration is not really good at this on this ship here. But it's fine. And the maximum jump range, I don't usually test the maximum jump range. But you know, since this is a cargo ship, might as well. 1192 kilometers on empty load. No, this decent. Oh, never mind, it's not empty actually. Oh, that's crazy. So that means, uh, let me empty out the thing actually. Oh, wait a second. That's not 620 tons, that's 6.2 kilotons. Because the ship has all these pre-packaged materials in here. So I'm guessing once the ship is empty, it, it's actually quite maneuverable. So you can probably dodge enemy fire easier while the ship is not loaded like this. Oh, I missed this earlier. The connector is really embedded. That's not good at all. I'm just gonna empty out the cargo here so you can see how it performs and how much it actually weights. You see the problem with embedded connector, right? Do you see that? There we go. Alright, I've moved everything out of the cargo containers. And the ship weighs 4.9 kilotons. That's still quite heavy actually. But again, it's not that much of a problem. Because you know, this is not a combat ship and it's not meant to, to go on planets either. Because you see there's actually no hydrogen thrusters on the ship, so... In terms of the turning speed of the ship, hmm, it's really slow. This is fine though, this is a cargo ship, so I actually prefer this rather, rather than a ship to have too many gyroscopes. The weight reduction doesn't really improve the performance that much, but it does feel a little bit faster. Not by much though. Oh, 
I know this won't be able to fly on the planets, but you know, let's just let's just fly there anyway. So yeah, um, it's certainly a very well designed ship with very intricate interiors, as you guess. So back there, and in in its function as a cargo ship, this is a decent ship to because this ship uh, cannot go to any of the planets since it doesn't have any hydrogen thrusters or atmospheric thrusters that does kind of limit what the ship can do and even though the ship generally has you know rather efficient design in terms of PC us usage there are still some inefficient design practices like having too many doors so it's not as slow PC as it can be so as you guys saw back there it's still relatively efficient and it can use all those extra PCU for those aesthetic decoration inside the ship and that further shows the importance of you know being efficient with your PCU rather than having like 50 connectors or whatever that you might that you most likely won't be using anyway you could have uh, easily decorate your ship's interior like on this ship here using low PCU blocks and I think that generally gives a much better gameplay experience rather than wasting your PC on things that you might or might not use and in terms of general design um, the ship is generally practical I mean the design is generally sensible so for example like those uh, jump drives holes up there that we saw earlier I know those are for aesthetic reasons but you know that does give some weaknesses to the jump drives you can kind of achieve the same effect by using like the viewport or something so overall the ship is nicely designed so you know like i mentioned earlier there are some downsides to this ship all right let's crash the ship now since my cargo are in the back right i'm gonna crash uh with the front of the ship here to protect the cargo back there i'm gonna try to save myself actually let's let's fly here oh here it goes Ooh. Oof. <laughs> I mean you know that does that did save the majority of the cargo containers I think yeah you see oh that was an amazing crash say so, that's the Jupiter cargo barge by Lord Kelder you guys can find the link in the description below it's a good thing this compartment didn't explode 